Okay, we're back. And I smoothed out the hills a little bit. I just couldn't take it. So they're not exactly the way they were at the park, but they're much closer to it. Uh, they have a much nicer parabola. So I'm happy with that. I also, uh, in the interim, put in the floor for the whip. Of course, it was a metal floor uh, made of eight foot metal plates. So that's the beginning of that. I'll add the center where the gears were here in the motor house before I put the roof on. And I also added over here the base for the satellite. And the satellite will be done in 3D, but I needed the base with the little walkway up. And then I'll build the sign on the computer and put that in there. And the little roof over the operator station, which was right here. So the big project right now is the largest building in the park, the Clambake Pavilion. So what I did is I simply created these out of foam core board for the sides of the building. And when they're completely dry, I'm going to position them and glue them in place. Then I'll glue this side of the building on. And once that side's on, then I'll put the roof on. And the roof I'll do on the computer and cardstock and then glue it down to here. Originally, I was going to put arches in here, just like they had it in the pavilion. Roger Fortin built those arches by hand. Uh, they were bent wood arches and they had lights in them. And that's really the only reason they were done that way is just for looks, for the lights, because they didn't have much structural property to them. In fact, in the winter, they had to go in and put uh, eight by eight beams all the way along here to hold up the roof from the snow load. But they look really pretty. And um, I was going to try to recreate them, but nobody would see them because the roof, as you can see on here, has a really low slope to it and it extends over here. So nobody would be able to look in and see the arches. It would have been a waste of my time and effort. Um, and then I have to build the stage, which was a dome, a half dome on the back of the pavilion. And then on this side, the towers, which is a pretty standard box structure, except this area here, which was curved and it slanted out. A lot of these facades to the building so that the people standing on the midway could see it, they all slanted outward so that you could look up at them and see all the writing on them, like for Frosty Joy in the arcade. And this had a pizza sign on it. So that'll be a little tricky to build. But I want to get this whole section done next. So off we go. We're coming along. You can see I got the main structure, supporting structure up. And I decided to do the whole thing in foam core board because it's such a clear span building. Um, I didn't want to take a chance on it collapsing. So the bulk of it is foam core board. I've got the roof here that I will put on later. Um, to round that out. Uh, but first, I have two other things I have to do. Well, three other things. I've got to put the back on for the dome, and i still got to figure out that one. And I've got the storage room that was here. This was actually elevated off the ground a bit. The ground, again, here sloped away very sharply, and underneath the pavilion was a storage area where they kept old ride parts and things like that. That's not going to be here. What I might do is just paint a sort of black area under here, giving the impression that there's an underneath. This actually, too, I noticed in a photo I had taken, this was a sharp drop-off just like this. So I might re-sculpt this just to get that right up to the, the edge of the, the uh, pavilion. It was a sharp drop-off. So I think I'm going to put that in there just to be a little more accurate. Not much I can do about this over here unless I chop it all out and... I might, I might decide to do that just to give it that look. And this one here, the restrooms went all the way to the ground. And you can even see I have the little tiny doorway here that was the entrance into here. Um, there was the wall here of beer concessions. Uh, and that's, a lot of people would come up here and just go right for the beer. So that's where we're at so far. Let's keep working.
we're getting there. So, uh, you can see this. And notice I have the garage doors that were in the front. Those are there. And this is why I said once that roof is on, you'd never be able to see inside the room anyway. So, putting the arches in would have been a nice touch for warming the cockles of my heart, but it wouldn't do any good for anyone looking at the model. And over here, notice, I put in these strips of cork, which I had from my model railroad. I have lots of cork left over. And that worked out perfectly for being the big beams, the eight inch beams that held up the stage, which was attached here. Now, naturally, this would be a cutout um, in the original building and the stage would just go in there. And this is where the performers would be, like Larry Chesky would play in here. Um, but, not going to worry about that because you're never going to see inside there. I'm just going to attach the dome right to the back of this. The little areas over here are done. This was a storage room. And you can see it's up on stilts there. So that's coming along. And then over here, the restrooms are done. I have the roofs. And as usual, I have my little flap there. And these will just lock in there. And this one will lock in there when I glue it down. And so I'll have those two done, and the only thing remaining will be the stage. Now, notice I had to do it. I had to get that drop off here. I'd forgotten about that. So I went and chiseled all this out. You can see a slight difference in the color of the paint, but it's okay. But um, I did get that drop off in there, and I did get the uh, little storage room up on stilts like it was originally. And I also, if you notice, I painted this black under here. It's actually a dark, dark gray. And it gives a sense that there's an underneath to the pavilion at that point, like a shadow. And uh, I think that'll help give the sense that it was actually suspended above the ground at that point, and the ground raked up to meet the pavilion underneath. So uh, I'm gonna glue on these two roofs and then I can glue on the top roof and then the clam bake pavilion will be done except for the stage so I'll get to that after supper okay here's where we're at so far I built the castle clam bake what it is I got these little triangles again that I use for the merry-go-round and I put them all along the base here, glued them in, and let it dry. Now I'm gonna try bending these over onto this little lip that I have here. And if I can bend each one of these, I'm probably gonna to have to clip a little bit here and then fold and clip and fold. But hopefully that will make some semblance of a dome with shingles on it. So, and I also got some white glue, uh, plain old white glue, because the wood glue that I had, which is very sturdy and it adheres very well, uh, it, it is leaving yellow streaks on anything white. So I don't want any yellow streaks on this. It wouldn't look nice. So I'm gonna use the white glue instead and hopefully it will adhere well. Generally white glue like this uh, takes a while to set. So we'll see what happens. And there we have my efforts with paper. It looks like a deflated paper balloon. It's pretty bad. So I'm gonna to have to rethink this. I think my next thing is to go to a craft shop and get myself a ball of styrofoam and then cut it into a quarter and fit that in. And that will look much more like a dome. This here looks like crushed paper. Welcome back. And I did finally figure out the solution for this. Notice I did put the uh, styrofoam, I forgot to mention that last time, but I did put a styrofoam base in here on top of that cork to lift it off a little bit from the base. Um, but I did go out and I got a styrofoam ball and yes, I was able to find four and a half inch to match up with this, which is pr pretty amazing. So I was able to cut this into about a quarter, a little smaller than a quarter, and this will fit nicely right in there. And I'm gonna have to 
smush it down a little bit at the top to fit the roof on, but that's not a big deal. But that will work beautifully as the back of the stage. Then I'll just paint it um, sort of gray stippled and to make it look like the roof, and that'll be that. Uh, I also went and I got some clear glue. I didn't like the way the white glue was coming out. Um, it just didn't sit very well. So I'm going to try the clear glue on some of this stuff. And the trees came in. I'm so excited. We have trees, 200 trees. So I can start putting these around in various places. So that'll be nice. But another big thing I did while I was trying to figure out a solution for the stage, I worked on the mini arcade. As you can see, it's done. Nothing really special about the way this was done. Uh, basically, I did the same thing I did to all the other buildings where I put the bamboo posts in and then I made this on the computer and then wrapped it in cardstock and put the roof on. But um, the screening of this, I actually took the real uh, uh, shots from these various games. So this one here, the gifts game, I couldn't find a picture of what was in there. Most of the time that I was at the park, this was this concession was closed. But I did have one of the cigarettes game, so I put that in there. And the mini arcade, I had a shot of this side, but not this side. So I simply took this side and I flipped it. And as a little bonus, you can't really see it here, but Mabel Zinn is in there. She was the park matron, and uh, she's standing in there. And I just flipped that, so she's in there twice. She's uh, a clone. Uh, and the signs, which were tilted out, are all there. And these I grabbed from uh, the actual buildings, and I had to warp them a bit. And there's the arcade that I built from scratch for the sign for that. Those were actually on um, homosote, and they were tilted out from the building a bit. So I just put a little drop shadow on there. But the neat thing is, when you stand over here, like we all can stand there, and you look down the row here, it looks just like you're standing at the park. It's pretty neat. And you can also see the clown head that's there. That was the actual clown head that was on the side of the building at that point. So things are coming along nicely. And the pavilion is done. So, this didn't come out too badly. I don't like the color. I'm probably gonna stipple it a little bit more with some white, some lighter colors in there to try to make it resemble this a little bit more. Um, but it's not too bad. The shape is correct anyway. And you got that, you got that. Now the next step, two pieces. The towers, which is the big building right here with the pizza, and then a little frosty joy the ice cream joint that was here this is going to be a bit of a challenge because it has the slant the same that this does coming out but it's a much bigger sign a much more intricate sign so off we go on that so here we are a day later it's come along uh, turned out to be a little more involved than I expected but I've got the two roof pieces here. This for the tower section over here, and this for the main section over here. When I looked at photos from my collection, I noticed that there was an area of this that stuck out here. And that wasn't in my original plan. Originally it stopped here. So I added this, and it had two little basement windows, just like this one, so I added those. And this had two windows in it too. Um, I also now have, way down here, the little entrance in, which was in a, between these two buildings, and a little staircase went up. So I'll put that staircase in, I'll 3D print that down the road. Um, and then over here, we've got the two signs, the Frosty Joy and the Pizza sign, are set around the corner. This came out a little warped but I'm not gonna worry about that. There's not much I can do at this point except rip it all out, and I'm not gonna do that. And over here, you can see the little awning 
These were fiberglass awnings in the original park. And I left a gap here because there was a tree, uh, I think it was a big oak, that came right up through here. And they had kept the tree and built this around it, which I thought was really neat. So I want to recreate that tree um, going straight up here and then the crown out, out up top. Um, also, another thing I discovered is, um, you know how I do these little flaps to uh, secure the roof when I cock it in. And that works really well on irregular shapes like this. But it suddenly occurred to my dense head that um, with straight areas like this, all I had to do was take the foam core board, which you can see there, and just add little pieces of foam core board along the edge, just glue them right along the edge. And then I can just glue that right down onto those pieces and save myself the trouble of gluing all those little flaps. And then I won't need to use caulk. I can just use the clear glue and just secure it and that'll be fine on there. So we're gonna come back when this is done. And I think I'm also in this video gonna do two other little tiny buildings that are in this section. Right over here, the hot rod, which used to be the maintenance shop for when this whole section was the hot rods. Uh, and this over here, which was the soda game. So those should be fairly simple. I'll bite my tongue, you never know. But those should be fairly simple to do, and I should be able to finish those in this video as well. Okay, so the pizza roof is a mess. Uh, the problem is... I tried to do it like I did the Frosty Joy, which came out fine, but the Frosty Joy is a simple curve like this. This one had to go straight, then curve, and I, it just didn't bend right. So I think what I'm gonna do is redo this whole section. I'm gonna have to tear this all up, redo this whole section, and make it just straight across rather than trying to tilt it out um, as it is now because that's giving me problems. So if I just do it straight across as a straight piece, rather than the arc the way I designed it, um, I shouldn't have any problem fitting the roof on at that point. So off comes the roof and let's figure this out. And there we have it. The clam big pavilion and the towers are done. I redid the sign looks a lot cleaner now. It doesn't have the uh, angle that it originally had where it was tilted out, but it just it's more legible and it's cleaner and the awning looks better. So win-win. And I touched up the stage a little bit. It's not as blue as it was before. Uh, I couldn't get the stippling on it, but I'll get to that later. So now Let's go over here to the little hot rod storage and the soda game. All right, and we are done with the south section of the park. So, Clam Make Pavilion, Mini Arcade, Towers, Frosty Joy, and the soda game. That was a very easy one to do. It's just a little box. And it turned out that the hot rod building that was behind here, I looked at some source images, and it turns out it didn't exist. After about 1980, they went ahead and tore it out, and in footage that I've seen, there's just a giant pine tree right here. So I'll put a pine tree there, and that'll take care of that, so I didn't have to build that. So the next step will be down here. What I want to do is put in the restrooms and the tunnel for the train. And then I think the next step will be over here to put in the two games here uh, and the arcade, the big arcade next to Out of This World. These shouldn't be too bad. They're fairly square buildings done in a very similar style to what I did here. I actually came up with an interesting idea of how to put these on. I showed you how I was placing um, strips of foam, uh, foam core board along the side here in order to glue this down. That worked out really well. 
So I not only did that here for this roof, I also just simply cut, because it was small enough, I cut a square of foam core board, glued it underneath, and then just glued that whole thing onto there. So I didn't need to do all the caulking and everything, and that, that made it a lot easier to do. And it's actually a lot sturdier. So I may employ that same technique with some of these. I'll do these buildings separately and just glue them together. That way I can keep the buildings small enough and uh, they'll be sturdy enough. This one is a pretty big span, so I might have to do something else there. But, but anyway, that's where we're at right now. And stay tuned for the next sequence.